Hello and welcome to the Friday, August 19th, 2022 edition of the SANS Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Our diary today is coming from Jesse LeCrew again as part of his SANS College undergraduate internship. He created a useful Python script that will summarize logs from your Kauri honeypot. It'll summarize commands being executed by a particular attacker in a session, then look up IP addresses being used as part of the attack, as well as send binaries to virus total to see if they are already known and malicious. Pretty nice time saver and he's walking you through the tool with, with screenshots so you can see exactly what it does for you. And if you're using a TP-Link router, it may need an update. The update this time affects the TLWR841N routers. These routers suffer from a buffer overflow in the built-in ping utility. The vulnerability was found by Tran Min Kuang, and all you need to do to exploit it is pass an overly long IP address to the ping function built into the router's web-based admin interface. So in short, patch and do not expose those admin interfaces. A proof of concept exploit is available, but also is updated firmware. And yesterday we got patches from Apple for the most recent version of their operating systems. But I mentioned, well, uh, these two vulnerabilities that they patched, they may also affect older versions of your operating system. And these were already exploited vulnerabilities. Well, today we got an update for Safari. So this is standalone update for Safari, only meant for macOS Big Sur and Catalina. And it fixes the WebKit vulnerability that was fixed in Monterey yesterday. Now, no word on whether the second vulnerability, which was a kernel issue, also affects these older operating systems. Maybe we'll get additional updates for that later. That was a approach escalation vulnerability. The WebKit issue was the more critical one in the sense that it exposed your browser to arbitrary code execution. As I'm recording this, the bulletin for the Safari update is available by at, on Apple's website, but it's not linked yet to Apple's security updates overview page. And let's stick with Apple here for one more story. Security researcher Michael Horowitz wrote an extensive and still updated blog post showing how VPN products are not able to avoid leaks on iOS. Apparently, the issue here is a problem, should I say, bug uh, with iOS. The problem appears to manifest itself in VPNs uh, all for a sudden starting to leak traffic outside the VPN after the VPN has been up for a while. The only workaround offered by Apple to the public is the use of an always on VPN. Now this is a configuration option that you can sort of push to iOS devices if you centrally manage them. But that means, well, it's always so 100% of the time on. So uh, that doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Also, you need that central management piece. Proton VPN, which looked into this issue as well, was told by Apple to use a kill switch that apparently is sort of built in to the operating system that allows you to block all internet connectivity as data starts to leak. Michael is recommending that you just basically don't trust any VPN product on iOS. Uh, now, there's a lot of data in Michael's post, no exact conclusion as to what sort of the root cause of all of this, other than sort of some opaque bug in iOS. And then we got the fun vulnerability, I would say, coming from Microsoft's Raymond Chen. At least it's fun to read uh, as long as you're not affected by it. The CVE for the vulnerability is CVE 2022-38392. And it's a 
Good one to close out the week with, I think. The vulnerability affects Windows XP and certain 5,400 RPM laptop drives manufactured around 2005. So we're talking about quite old gear here. The problem manifests itself in a denial of service if the user listens to music by Janet Jackson. The hard drive will fail, likely because of some kind of resonance frequency being triggered this effect isn't actually new. I've heard it described a couple times before. For example, there were cases where fire alarms went off in data centers and caused mass failures of hard drives due to uh, this uh, effect. Also, hard drives slowing down in noisy environments in order to protect themselves and engaging some kind of vibration protection features. Well, and that's it for today. So watch out what music you listen to at work. And thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.